No one's ever said that to me in my life. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Utah. Okay. And then, and we don't ha- talk like the East Coast like y'all do. We don't make a call. Cool. We make a call. <laughs> we don't say, how will I use? <laughs> you know, I love the accents. That's so fun. But on the in the fall, everybody goes hunting. 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 Podcast Junkies, episode 59. With Amy Robles. This is the podcaster's voice, the show where we speak to fantastic, awesome, amazing, funny, engaging, personable podcasters. Because those are the best kind, right? Amy is no different. She's the host of Think Enriched. And I feel so much more enriched after having a really uh, fun conversation with Amy. And She's just a warm personality, and we passed in the hallway, like two ships, <laughs> at the podcast movement, and we didn't get to chat, but uh, I knew who she was, and I knew I wanted to meet up with her, but the, that weekend goes by so quickly. And so we connected again on the International Podcast Day Blabathon. If you don't know what Blab is, check out blab.im. It's a really hot, up-and-coming online chat tool that all the kids are talking about. So um, check it out. So it was just a full day of podcast, a full day of blabs about podcasting. And Amy was on before me, uh, the slot before me. And then um, long story short, I knew I wanted to have her on because I knew it would be um, a lot of fun. And so she really uh, has an interesting show where she digs deep into the nuts and bolts about what it takes to live an enriched life through the lens of managing and taking control and having ownership over your finances. And in the short period of time that she's had the show on, she's had uh, guests that have been friends of mine that I know, but also just conversations that go really in depth about the source of uh, the challenges folks have when they think about getting their their finances in order. And sometimes the conversation goes beyond that. And it's almost like that's the starting off point. And then she, she's really um, created a, an inviting um, and um, relaxed environment for her guests to allow them to open up. And a couple have already in the ones that I've listened to. And it really makes for engaging um, podcast listening. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with the one and only Amy Robles. So let right podcast junkies. Let's just talk about the impact of the sea of Charlie Brown yellow shirts. That picture blew my mind, dude. Blew my mind, and I kept thinking, "Is this a club? Where where can I find? Is it? I don't know. I'm not cool enough yet to get in, but I know if I I I I don't know. I remember seeing you by passing you in the hallway. I was like, "Oh, Amy Robles. I gotta say hi," but I forgot. I, everything moves so fast there oh. and, and the three days blow by and I was like, oh man, so many people I, I promised we were going to meet up with and it didn't happen. So, And I was in super, super nerd zone. Yeah. This is my first podcast event ever. I took an entire book of notes. Like I was crazy writing everything down and what am I learning? And hi, nice to meet you. I need to go to class. <laughs> I kind of miss that element yeah. and I can see like I need to do better next time. It's a fine line because the you pick and choose like some of them. There's much better. There weren't just classes on how to podcast. There were just like people that I wanted to fucking meet, like Leah Tao from Strangers. I was like, holy shit! And I think um, she's gonna come on the show, which is awesome. Uh, Jared Morris from Rainmaker and the yeah. showrunner. He was just the, the most recent episode. I loved that episode, and he was awesome, man. It was it was so cool to like begin to develop relationships with like people like that and. And that's the reason why I do the video too, because it's like, oh, we've been chatting for like an hour. So when you see them at the conference, you're like, hey, Harry, like, like get the hug. And then it's like, okay, like uh, we're friends now. And yeah, you just ongoing like Jessica and, and Elsie and all those Rob, Wal- Rob uh, Walsh and just, yeah, it's cool. It's just, um, it's just lining people up. It's, it's just like, I think I have three in a can. I'm like, yes, I'm set. And then like the, the three weeks go by so fast. I'm like, ah, oh, I, inter- I need more interviews. 
so fast. So. How did the three weeks just pass? What am I, I mean, it's nuts. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you've got like three days to get an episode up and you're like, oh, oh dear. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So we haven't started, so I guess we could start. Okay. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I could use some of that, but uh, yeah, I'll probably have to do some editing, but. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. No, I think that's what makes you stand out, dude. And we can talk about that. Yeah, go ahead. We can start. Um. So Amy Robles, thank you for uh, gracing me with your presence on Podcast Junkies. Gracing me with your presence? <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me write that down and put it on the wall, brother man. That's beautiful. Holy cow. <laughs> you got to make folks feel special, you know? Oh, it is. I just feel like coming home on Christmas is Come beautiful. On. Where's the hot chocolate? <laughs> you enjoy the holidays? Oh, I'm a fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been listening to Christmas music since August. Really? Is- wow. Already? That's early. Yeah. But it's because I took piano lessons all growing up. Uh, My husband at first was like, what the crap? It's 90 degrees outside. We are not listening to freaking Christmas music. <laughs> but if you play the piano, then you've got to start your Christmas songs as soon as the school year starts. So that sort of thing. How long have you been playing the piano? Uh, probably 15 years. And then I taught for five Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> People are supposed to say they love it. It's the best thing ever. Oh, no. You got kids there that don't want to be there. And they're just, how much more? Because, you know. So is the, is the teaching the, the, the drag or was it uh, the getting taught the drag? Oh, I loved getting taught because I wanted to learn how to play. And I like to sit down and just sight read. I'm not really good at just sitting down at a, a whole keyboard and then just going and making up stuff. But I have done it for a couple of weddings. I don't recommend that. <laughs> Weird, huh? But I love to sit down and just look at a piece of music and be like, it's not going to sound perfect, but this is going to be pretty spot on. Someone could sing to this. All right, let's go. Let's make it happen. I love that stuff. What was the driver for you to learn piano? I don't know. It's always been a thing for me. So you, yeah. did, you, you did it on your own? You said, I want to learn piano? Because mm-hmm. most, like, most kids are pushed into it by their parents. Yeah. When I was four or five and we bought the piano and it was this old player piano where, you know, it would stand up, right? That whole thing. But it, it was like two more years before I could ever take lessons. So. Just kinda, and did you, you, you performed in recitals? Oh, yeah. Real, a lot. That was the thing. And then it turned into... <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this already. Wow. Uh, vocal performance. And so I studied opera, but you don't, you don't just use opera in your day-to-day routine, you know? We might, use it, we might use it during this interview. No, we might not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate, I appreciate the arts. It doesn't mean I should be up there performing. So what type, what, uh, what type of voice are you? Cause there's the whole like soprano and I, I, I have no idea what they are, but. Um, like in my, in my days, in my prime, it's called a dramatic soprano. So you can just get up there really high, but then you got that big wolfy mama voice, that big deep stuff going on, you know? So I think that's another reason I really love podcasting is there's so much you can just get across and, and tell in the story in just your voice, you know? Oh, I, thought you, I thought you were going to say you liked it because there's so many dramatic people in podcasting. Oh, that's a bonus. That is just good material. You can just go any direction that way. No. Well, that, I mean, that, that, that type of voice must come in handy, like when you're at a conference or something and you want to get someone's attention, right? Yes. <laughs> and the quieter you are, the more attention it seems to get. Yeah. I that's don't know. True. It's well, with, it's, with, with podcasting, it's so intimate. Just had a moment. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my word! This is great. I knew I needed to meet you, brother man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, it's so funny because there's so many people in this in this uh, pod verse. That's a new. That's in my new word. I, I invented that <laughs> up. <clears throat> pod verse. Pod verse, and and it's cool because there's a lot of cool people and there's a lot of not so cool people and you stay away from the not so cool people and then you (laughs) rush to find the cool people and then you want to hang with them and you want them to be on your show and things like that. Totally. And listening to your show, like just kind of going back because I just barely found you July this year, right? Yeah. 
So going through the catalog, the whole thing, and I'm like, I love that guy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Elsie. Oh, she's changed my life. That's incredible. I feel like you're the connecting piece, man. You are so smart with the relationships that you're developing, and they love you and that piece. <laughs> There's so much power in relationships. And sure, we can just say, you know, it's just because we are all fun people or, you know, enjoy life as we're doing all this brutal work some days. But there's more to it. There's a lot more to that. And so, <laughs> finishing, yeah, it's so many. We've, we've got so many. I'm gonna, I'm jotting notes here, so because we're, <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of rabbit holes to go down. But I'm, I just want to close out that that performance piece because um, did you have a moment when you were, did you have a high point in your your short lived career as a pianist? Um, was it, that was like maybe a recital or something where you really felt like you were at the top of your game? Hmm. I don't know, because piano is something that you can always use every Sunday. Somebody's going to need somebody to play, you know, somewhere. And so there was one at the end of high school, it was one big old concerto and it's just got that big boom and going down. And that, and that when you finish that as a performance piece, as a competitive piece, then you're like, that was amazing. <laughs> you don't ever think about all those little tiny steps, all those components. And it's so hard to work through the, the nuances. But when you put it all together, you're like, wow, there's wow. What a cool parallel. I've never once thought of that, Harry, of how much that relates to life and how much that relates to podcasting or whatever you want to invest in, whatever you want to do. You got to work through those little kinks to make it beautiful. Yeah, because I... I, there's all these little exercises I'm sure that you have to do. The thing that fascinates me about the piano is the fact that you have to have like your fingers st strong, I guess, or, or very nimble or um, I don't know what's the word, but like the fact that your pinky is supposed to be able to strike that key just as hard as your index finger. Um, and I imagine there's exercises that teaches you all that stuff, right? Yep. And those scales and you got to do them over and over and over every day. Crazy. The, all of this is making me think of you as a DJ. I don't get what a DJ does, but I know when there's a good DJ and there's a DJ that's got like four, you know, mixes or blends or however they put it together and they just rotate through. Yeah. It's crazy. There's so much artistry that comes into it that people cannot notice unless they're really paying attention. Yeah. I've always been, I mean, I play uh, house music and I've been a DJ, I guess, 20 plus years and I, I just remember in my basement taking records and the um mixing them on vinyl and there's like a skill called uh uh beat matching or whatever or whatever it's called now now you can do it automatically with with a, with a software called tractor and but in the beginning you'd have to take two vinyl records and sync them in line so that you can seamlessly <laughs> mix the one beat into the next <coughs> and then have to keep sort of the mood going and so not only you have to keep mixing the the track seamlessly so it's on beat so you you don't hear what's, what's called a train wreck mm -hmm. um but you have to have a music selection as well so it's the it's the technical skill and then it's the uh sort of like the people or the reading the room skill and i've always you know there's purist djs who just like to play their sets and they just stare at their you know, in the, in the back in the day at their, at their turntables. And now it's, they just stare at the laptops and they don't look at what's happening on the dance floor. And you're like, well, at the end of the day, like if those people on the dance floor aren't moving, then you haven't done your job. Mm. And it's something that's always like stayed with me. Like if, if no matter how awesome I, I think I sound on, um, on the microphone or what, how awesome the conversation is that I had with someone, how much I I'm, I'm engaged with them. If I don't have some sort of reaction, if I don't see what's happening on the virtual dance floor, you know, with the audience, then I don't know that I'm being successful. So that's why I'm, I'm really, I, I've always loved getting feedback and, and responses back from people or even just from guests at the end of interviews. At least it knows that like something is happening that's resonating with people. Yeah. I was just seeing all of those different parallels. Like that's amazing. Once you get podcasting and you're serious about it, it's so much more than just you talking on a microphone. It's about really connecting. It's about making things happen or showing people that it's possible that things can really move forward. That's been the most exciting part for me. And so how long have you had the podcasting bug uh, first as a 
a consumer and then as, as something that you felt that you wanted to do? <laughs> so my husband has always been listening to podcasts when it was really hard to get and you had to do the RSS feed and the whole nine. And so he'd be listening to like Leo Laporte. And I remember when we were first married, I was like, I don't know Nerd. what this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's awkward. <laughs> so he just listened in the car on his own time, that sort of thing. And then um, probably 2013, he was on a deployment and I was listening to to go merge run a half marathon. Hilarious because I was just learning that I could be a runner. I know it doesn't sound like a show you would normally know. They are a rip in the shorts, man. Hilarious. And they're just like buddies that grew up together. What's it called? Two gomers run a marathon. That's now funny. it's a, a different one. Anyway, okay. so they really helped me a lot in training for this half marathon while my husband's out on deployment. And we actually tried to run the marathon in Disneyland and didn't make it. And I was like, what's wrong with me? What, what, what's going on? Oh, I was pregnant and sick and didn't know. And so mm. it's kind of cool how all these things, you know, just tie together. But I've probably been listening hardcore since 2013, maybe 2012 that time. But then I never wanted to do any of this podcasting stuff. It, it just is weird. We started on this financial journey of we're going to get our finances in order. We are done with debt. This is so much junk. We're not dealing with this anymore because it was affecting our marriage. Like that tension, you don't want to talk about it. You just, yeah. yeah and we don't have that otherwise. And so uh, started getting our finances in order and I thought, I mean, I need to make a blog. I really, people just need to know that it's possible that you can fix things and turn it around. He's like, all right, start a blog. <laughs> Little did he know that it would start this whole crazy cycle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then like three, four months later, I was like, I think I need a podcast. And the look he gave me was like, okay. yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea, darling. You run with that, you know? And I love, I love podcasting 10 times more than ever being a blogger. There's something about that connection. There's something about talking that that's easier for me than to construct a beautiful blog post. Cause you really can't hear all the influence. You can't hear all of that. I don't know. There's a performance it's, aspect to it. There is, there really is. And you know, my whole life, my uh, growing up, my mom had a beauty shop in our basement and so they would, all these little old grandmas would come over and get their cute little cotton tops done every week. And so in, on the afternoons, Friday afternoon, my friend Kristen would call from down the street and say, hey, do you want to play? Uh, no, I'm with Ruth. Ruth was the perfect little lunch lady. Absolutely adorable. And she'd come and get her hair done on Friday. And she and I would sit and talk and she'd make me feel like a million bucks. We don't get conversation anymore in life. It's crazy. Our society's like trained us. Just do what you got to do. Yeah. And, and I think the whole aspect of learning how to, or having the patience to sit down and have a conversation with someone is a learned skill that you have to do repeatedly with someone that uh, knows how to do it. And quite honestly, with someone probably that has nowhere else to go and loves to talk. <laughs> It's funny because I had a similar experience because um, uh, my my mom used to work in a nursing home. And mm. when I first got started, like, you know, with summer jobs, she was like, well, you can come help out here. And we would help out like in the laundry room and help like clean some of the rooms. And inevitably you'd be in the break room and you'd be sitting there playing checkers with some like, you know, at that time it seemed like a really old person. They were probably like in their 60s or 70s. God bless them. But, uh, you know, you they would just sit and talk to you. You would sit and talk and talk and talk and talk. And, and thankfully back then there was no, there was no mobile phones to distract us. And so, yeah. Cause you try to put a kid in there in a nursing home now and they'll just be like Twittering and Snapchatting and, and just not paying attention. So there was a, there's something to be said, um, without sounding like, Oh, back in my day, like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's just like something to be said for, uh, respecting the wisdom that comes uh, from having lived that many years. And no matter how many times you try to impart that knowledge to someone that's young, they just don't get it um, until they're older. And you had the benefit of experiencing that. Cause I remember reading about that on your uh, about page that you, 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 
you thought that was normal that these conversations with these you know very entertaining women and who just had a wealth of wisdom i imagine was something that every kid did yeah crazy totally crazy and when i go home and visit family and friends i send out one text to the girls my girls and we sit down and we know we're going to lunch and we know right away that that lunch is going to be two, three hours. Because I don't want to just say, oh, hi, how are you? All right, great taco. Later. <laughs> you know, I want to sit down at like, what's happening? What are you learning? How are you growing? That kind of thing. And at one time going back and after we had lunch, we were driving home with a friend and I said, so you guys do this like what, every month? Every She's like, no, we never do this until you talk. I thought that's so sad. Oh, wow. You know? But it's crazy how you get in your own routine, you get your own thing going on, that we don't take time to connect like we should as humans. And so how have you thought about approaching that with uh, your family as as they grow up? And what do you think you can do that's different? So that aspect of, um, or that, conversation, the importance of that is not lost on them? Wow. Great question. We've talked about this a lot. When my husband comes home, well, we were way better at this before my daughter was born. We take 15 minutes and that just means we'll turn off the world, no phones, no nothing. He and I just looking at each other, what's going on? How was your day? What? And so if he needs to vent, he can vent. If I need to just say, uh, this isn't working and I need some help with one, two or three, then you handle all these little things and they don't become big things. Also, another thing that we work on is no cell phones at the at dinner time. So if we're eating breakfast together on Saturday morning, uh-uh, there's not a cell phone even close. This is our family time, making sure that that's taken place. When my daughter gets older, and especially when I visit family at home, every night turns into board game night. So there's some sort of activity pulling us together. Yeah. And then it's not electronic. But, you know, sometimes people still have their phones there. I've actually read of people that have a basket. So when you come in to their home, you put your you take your shoes off and then you just put your phone in the basket. I've so then you that. have to I know, but I don't know if I have enough guts to be like, <laughs> Hi, we don't trust you enough with your self discipline. Please put your phone in here. Well, I think you're sort of laying the ground rules for how things are done in your house. Right. And you're saying in like, you know, it's the people that have like ask you to take off their shoes. You know, some people like have these beautiful wood floors or they just they don't like bringing like the outside dirt to their carpet or something. So every time I see that, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I immediately obviously respect that. And uh and it's like, okay, they, they don't think twice about it. They're like, this is this is how it's done in my house, right? So take it or leave it. And I think it sort of sets you up in a way that says, you know, shows what you value and the fact that I want to connect with you and we don't get to connect that often. So let's make the most of it. And this is how we're going to do it. We've done that. I've, we've played around with some of that. Like when we go to, with friends who are a little bit younger, we do the one where it's, it's sort of like the game they say, like you put the, the all the phones in the middle of the table when you go to dinner and the first one to grab their phone pays the bill. But we do that joking. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and so, you know, we don't make people pay the bill, but we just kind of, it's something just to be conscious of the fact that you're the awkward one reaching for the phone first. And so, you know, typically we make it through through the whole meal, but it's just, it's just so pervasive. And even, even when my wife and I sometimes like, I'm I'm the type of person that likes to look up things immediately because I'm like so naturally curious that like, oh, wait, that movie, what, what what's that movie? And I'm like, Wikipedia, IMDb. And I'm like, oh, let's jump on it. And it's like, oh, you have to resist that urge to have the need to have the answer right away because just because we can. That's so true. That's so true. And there's there's an element of curiosity that is so good that keeps you involved and engaged in what's happening in life. But like everything, you got to have that in control. Yeah. Smart. Smart. So you've, you've been, you've hopped around, right? In terms of uh, living in different places. <laughs> no one's ever said that to me in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Utah. Okay. And then, and we don't ha- talk like 
the East Coast like y'all do. We don't make a call. We make a call. <laughs> we don't say, how will I use? <laughs> you know, I love the accents. That's so fun. But on the in the fall, everybody goes hunting. 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 You know people that go hunting? They go hunting in the mountains. Wow. <laughs> it's, they just eat the word like that. It's great. No, so I left and worked in um, uh, Orange County, California, and I was there for three years and met my husband, and he's okay. in the military. And so then- we moved to San Diego. That's where he was. So we were dating long distance for those that first couple of years. And then, so we were in San Diego for a few years. And then we moved to Hawaii and we were in Hawaii for five, five and a half. And then now we're up here in Washington state. So. What part of Hawaii? Right in Honolulu. Okay. Yeah. We, we first time was last year for New Year's. We went to Kauai. Oh, oh, Kauai is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that's the retirement place. That's the most beautiful place on earth, I think. It's really that I've nice. Seen. Yeah. So did you go straight to the island? Did you do a cruise? What were you doing? We've never done a cruise. We're not fans of spending extended periods of time on a floating ship <laughs> in the middle of the ocean. It just, I, I think it's a cabin fever thing and just feeling like, what we wait, we can't get off. Like we have to wait and like we have to stay here. And so thankfully we're on the same page and n neither of us have any desire to jump on a cruise. But we went, we have friends that we used to live in Atlanta and we have friends that were our neighbors and this slightly, uh, this older couple. And now they live in Hawaii and they're distributors for um, a ice cream. Uh, it's called Ono Pops. And it's hand, it's it's made in Hawaii. I think it's made on the Big Island, and they they're the distributor in Kauai for it. And but she's a chef, so I think they're going to start making it on Kauai itself, and it's all sourced from Hawaii ingredients. So it's oh, like a frozen nice. fruit, but it's all like lychee and all these like um like mango and crazy exotic flavors. I think there was like a strawberry. Uh, I don't know, bananas. There was something, it was some crazy, comment. strawberry shortcake. It was like, yeah, so they were all amazing. And so we went to, we went to there and we stayed um, at a friend's house. So we stayed there, you know, we had, we had accommodations taken care of and we just spent the day, you know, the, the week exploring the island, then South Shore and North Shore and doing a lot of hiking and it was awesome. Oh, that's great. Good for you. I like saying what? awesome a lot. I just realized that. <laughs> I do when I'm podcasting because like, it's just kind of the closing word. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, smooth transition. I need to work on that a little bit better. And so how are you finding the Northwest? Oh, I love it here. It's beautiful, huh? It's so beautiful. I, I, my husband was really worried because he's born and raised in California that being up here with so much rain would just be, you know, devastating for him, but it hasn't been like that. And I think because we've had some really beautiful summers here that we've had plenty of time to be outside and to enjoy, but it's never like brutally hot. It's just comfortable and the huge pines. And so it's always smells like a, ah, that well, perfect relaxing. Yeah. Like, like a real live air freshener. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's burning a candle here. What's going on, man? <laughs> Pine and eucalyptus. Who came up with that? I don't know. <laughs> it's not eucalyptus, but something along those lines. And uh, yeah. where, where exactly are you at? We are directly across the sound from Seattle. Okay. In, so Kitsap County is the area that we're in. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. So for us to do any sort of podcast meetup, we have a guy that's in Olympia who travels 45 minutes north to come to Tacoma. I travel probably 30 minutes. And then like Jody Mayberry lives way out in a in a port town over there. And he travels like two hours just to meet together. Wow. It's crazy, but it's so amazing to get together and have those real life relationships to come together. So. Yeah, I totally agree. We have a, a meetup here in Los Angeles um, that was started by Esprit Devora. Yeah. Right. You guys are like a power team in that. I see. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I saw international podcasting. You too. It was like you were just laughing back and forth and just had your own little energy bubble going on. And everybody's like, wow. She's crazy. She's so like uh chock full of energy. So it's infectious. Yeah. She's fun. And uh, yeah, she's, she picked up podcasting. Like, I think it's only been a year, but she tackled it like, 
at, at, and attacked it with so much enthusiasm. It's been crazy and, and really good for like uh, our scene over here. So I'm a huge fan of uh, meeting up in person. Yeah. Exactly. And so who started the group um, on your side? Me. Okay. <laughs> I said to Jared Easley, I, th- I, think, I think we need to have a meetup here. I think we need to. He's like, call Jody right now. Pick up the phone. Call it, you know? And so we, the first time we met, it was, hi, <laughs> I heard you on a show once. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it was yeah. really awkward. How long ago but, was this? Uh, a year ago now, exactly. And so he and I were first, and I put it on meetupon.com just to see if anyone would show up. So he and I are just talking like, what could we do and how could we form this and that co- sort of thing? And this woman came also and wow, like he and I were totally in the zone talking, podcasting, everything. And she's talking Sasquatch <laughs> and she loves Sasquatch and they're just misunderstood. What is going on? Wow. Why, why, uh, it was so crazy. And to see Jody tell the story kills me every time because it was just awkward. So this little guy, this is our mascot. This oh, is that's Sas- right. <laughs> yeah. Sasquatch Mike. So it's a little I don't know. He was on the international podcast day as well. Which was so fun. Did you have a fun time doing that? That was amazing. I kept jumping in and out. And I I guess for the listeners who were stranded on an island somewhere who don't know what we're talking about, it was a 24 plus, I think close to 30 plus hours of nonstop um, online live chatting. And every hour, a different set of hosts would jump on. And from around the, the world. From around the world. There was folks from Spain, Germany, Poland. It was crazy. I think it was 11 countries represented. Yeah. And, it was and so you'd hear what they were working on and what were really working for them and that sort of thing. So I was like you. I would just jump in and jump out and jump in and jump out as, as I could throughout the day. And there was one time I saw your tweet that said, International Podcast Day. I just can't quit you. I busted up, dude. I I felt like you were reading my mind. Like, I got to get some things done. But man, this is so fun. Yeah, it was like crack. It's so addictive. So yeah, I think that was so much fun. And I think I'm going to talk to Spree about doing something on a regular basis, uh, maybe just once a month or something, and just do a sort of hangout where we keep it on the same topic as podcasting. And maybe we pull in people that were involved on that day. And we just chat for an hour and let people jump in and I don't know. Fun. Yeah. People like you. I'm down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gonna write that in the schedule right away. That's what I'm learning. The one thing, it's hard to fit all this podcasting stuff in, but I've been getting up at five in the morning, doing as much as I can before I start my day, get my little girl to preschool and I can go through the regular day. Then she goes to bed at eight and then from eight on is when I'm doing it. But that's what I got to do right now to make things work. So what is, what is it about you or your personality that uh, drives you to get up that early to get this stuff done? <laughs> I I don't have to drive. <laughs> I'm working on it, right? This but, you, is, but you're doing it. I am. That's the so thing. What, I, so what is it? I've never thought about it. You can stay in bed. I mean, you could definitely hit the snooze bar and just, you know, catch a couple of extra mm. Z's. Why not? I know. I love it. I just love what's happening. I love the people that I'm meeting. But all of this stuff that I love so much, I'm still mama first. And that's my family is so important to me. That's number one. And so I can't jeopardize that because I'm working on this so much. So this is, uh, I think tonight's the first night I don't have something after nine o'clock PM where I can go to bed with my family, like a regular, you know, regular time, but I'll do this as long as necessary until it builds up to something. And, and what I'm noticing is as it started just talking and my show is about learning how to manage money, learning how to be really smart with your money and what's happening for regular everyday Americans. Because you got like the gurus way up high and you've got people that are just like, uh, what's a mutual fund? Uh." (laughs) You know what I mean? Most people don't go through and study the different nuances of what is 
what makes a mortgage really work for their family. So I, I just kind of wanted to start there and just talk about this is what we're working on. This is how far we've come. And in two years, it's like we started out with 47, 50, excuse me, $57,000 of debt of just junk. And we're down to my last 16000 of, and it's just my student loans. And so we're, it's so close, light at the end of the tunnel. And as I started with all of this, it's become about what the people are learning, what is happening. And oh my word, if I do these two little things, I can pay this off and my bills get paid off faster. And oh, this is so exciting, you know, and it's just become so much bigger than me. And so as that was all happening, when did you realize you wanted to spread the word about what it is you were learning in the form of a podcast? So a couple months after I started blogging and now it's been, you know, just a couple years and I'm 200 blog posts in. So I've put in some time to make sure I've got the posts going. And I just knew that I could communicate better in a podcast than I could writing it, that sort of thing. That was what it was for me. So, um, you've been doing this for several months now, right? Uh, the show started late April, first part of May. Okay. This one. Mm -hmm. So just a summer figuring it out, you know, what's Incredible. been, what's been the most surprising thing so far? So the way I set up my show, um, was at first just doing the interviews and it, you know, everybody, when they first start, it's like, hello, welcome. We're glad to have you here. <laughs> Those kind of interviews. Yeah. You're not really yourself. Everybody just kind of freezes up at the mic the very first. And so I started doing these interviews with people. And then on Fridays is just a five minute blurb kind of a thing of this is what I'm learning. This is what I'm working on. Or I did one that was five minutes on how to save money. You want that killer $5,000 vacation next year? How much is that going to be to break it down? And I did break it down week by week of how much to save. Well, those little five minute episodes of what's happening in my life and what I'm working on, excuse me, and what and breaking down financial concepts have become as popular, if not more than these interviews, which is weird because it's just snippets of financial education, but, you know, fun format, I guess. Um, it's that and it's also the fact that you're likely revealing a more personal side of yourself. And your, your guard is probably down a little bit more when you're, when you're recording those because you don't have the formality of interviewing someone. So you're probably more at ease and people can hear that in your voice and they sort of resonate with that more. And so I think you tend to connect more with your audience uh, when you do those sorts of things. Oh, wow. Is it easier for you to do solo episode? Uh, I've only done a couple and... I haven't thought about incorporating something um, along the lines of what you're doing. And I, th I think it'd be an interesting experiment where I just, I, I, I release my episodes every Monday and it'd be interesting to, to maybe try something where it's just free, free form Fridays. And I'm, I talk about plans for the week and see how, what folks are interested in. And, um, but uh, like everything else, it's your podcast. Feel free to try it. Right. And, and your your listeners will let you know whether it's something that's successful or not very quickly. So, you know, why not <laughs> why, why not have at it? Have you ever said, Harry, we need less than that? Have you ever heard that? I haven't heard anyone say <laughs> say <laughs> we need less Harry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I mean, like, you know, let's not do that so much. Have you gotten any of that kind of feedback? I haven't yet. No, and um, I probably should try to solicit more engagement on my show. But I think that's one of the reasons why I like going to conferences, because it's sort of my way to just engage not only with the folks that I've had on my show and deepen the relationships with, which I think is really important, but yeah. uh, just to get a gauge of what's happening out there and what people are listening to and what they're excited about and introduce my show and just be an ambassador for podcasting and ambassador for my show and it's like, as you know, I mean, this is like a full-time job, oh. you know, to, to promote, produce and do every single part related to podcasting. But, you know, there's nothing more, more fun for me than 
turning on the mic and and chatting with awesome people like you. See, awesome again. I said it again. Word. I love it. So, so take me down that journey. Like you're at NMX, you're promoting your mobile app that I haven't heard about much lately because it was for specifically DJs, right? Yes. And then you just said, hey, podcast, let's podcast. Like where, how does that go from, because those are two different worlds, it seems like. Well, I went there to start a podcast <laughs> where I was oh. going to, yeah, I was going to, I was, well, I want to interview DJs. So I'm going to learn how to do that. And I went and I saw these speakers and I said, wow, I'm really fascinated. I'm a podcast junkie myself and I, let me interview podcasters because those are cool people. And, and as a bonus, everyone's going to have at least a nice microphone. So, that, so they're all so- sound good. <laughs> <laughs> you actually said I'm a podcast junkie. That's how the name got started. It's, I still don't remember the specifics and Chris Murphy and I go back and forth on this, but Chris Murphy was the guy who introduced C- Cliff Ravenscraft at a talk at NMX in in January of 2014 and I said who's Chris let me track him down and uh regular listeners are have heard the story regular uh, lots of times but <laughs> but deal- that's your story it's yeah. good yeah so deal with it um <laughs> <laughs> no it's just I don't get tired of telling it it's it's fun and uh and I just yeah I said well that's me I looked at my phone I'm like 30 40 podcasts in there and I never get a chance to listen to them all And much less now that I have my own show and all these other ventures I'm working on, even less time. So that's why the 2X for me is a a, a godsend because that's the only way I blast through like all these podcasts. So much, so much amazing content. So many new podcasts coming out that are just incredibly inspiring. The production value in some of these things is totally bananas. And I'm like, wow. Some of these folks take... um, a month to do an episode of Vanessa, Vanessa Lowe from Nocturne. She does a storytelling podcast and all her shows are about the, the concept of night. So that's like the baseline. And then, so each story has something to do with something that happens at night. Right. Oh. So it's really interesting. And if you haven't heard that show, listen to a couple of episodes. Her production is amazing. Um, her husband is uh, like an audio editor for like, he's done scores for films, I think. So it's just, it sounds so lush and so really, really like intense. Um, it's one, it's one of my favorites. Okay. So production quality is really, really important to you and you can tell and you get all of this rich sound and this whole experience that's important to you. How in the world, Harry, can you listen to that to 2X? Cause oh, I've no, you tried. Can't. You can't. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause 2X to me sounds like chipmunks. I can't, I can't even keep. Well, up. So here's the thing. It's an algorithm and it two X's the the speed, but it keeps the pitch. So it's not a chipmunks thing. So they're speaking faster, but the tone of the voice remains the same. Um, I use overcast. I've tried it on the podcast app. It doesn't sound as good and it's a little glitchy, but try, try a different app, try overcast. And it's, I think it's free to try. And then there's like three or $4 for some extra features, but Um, there, the algorithm that they use to speed it up is much better. And then you can start at 1.25, 1.5, and you slowly work your way into it. It's like, you know, going to the gym and, you know, lifting up the little weights and then moving up. It's the same concept. You train your ear to listen at that speed. So I, I can't, if it's just, and if it's just speaking and it's just conversation and it's, it's a lighthearted topic, it's like these comedy podcasts, I'm not, I'm not trying to learn how to like split the atom. So I just like, <laughs> I, I can listen at 2X and get the gist of it, 80% of it, and just all listen to the, the bad jokes and the, the interesting commentary. So that at least gets me my fix and allows me to go through all these amazing shows and still absorb the content. I have this example that I always use of like um, Neo in the Matrix. He's like, do you know how to fly that helicopter? And he gets the download. He's like, um, no, now I do. And so, so, so I feel like I, I just want to absorb the content. I don't care if I'm like initially comprehending it. I think in at some subliminal part of my brain, I'm getting the message. So I want to get as many of the messages from as many of the, the cool uh, podcasts out there as possible. And I, and I try to squeeze in the occasional audiobook as well. So, so wow. yeah, that's it, awesome. I'm when you basic- were listening. So go ahead. No, so I'm bas- <laughs> basically that means that I constantly have earbuds in my ear. Right. 
When you're listening to a fun uh, comedy podcast or something that's really funny, one of those conversations, do you ever find yourself just like smiling? <laughs> oh, not just smiling, laughing out loud. Yes. Yeah. In your own little world. Like I was listening, I think it was you and, and Jared. I don't know. It was one of the recent ones. It might've been you and Chris Cerrone. And I was there lifting and I had to stop because I just busted up like mid curl. <laughs> I know it looked like, oh, this is so sad. Big girls trying to get things in order. Oh, it's just so sad. But inside, I know what's going on, right? Nobody knows my yeah. determination. That was great. Yeah. So thank you for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Right on. We aim to please at Podcast Junkies. Beautiful. So... What have you thought about um, looking forward in terms of the types of guests that you want to bring on the show? And has has it opened up doors for you at this point? Yes, definitely open up doors to the financial community. Because um, I'm I don't feel like a a rock star personal finance blogger. There's personal finance bloggers that break it down, the insurance rates and the percentages and that whole thing. You know, I want to get big, the broad strokes, what's going to work best for our family and move forward. And then once we get that situated, then what's, you know, that next sort of thing. But I bring in people that are doing things totally differently than I am. And whoa, that's pretty cool. I don't ever want to be a minimalist. I enjoy stuff. <laughs> but yeah. there's some amazing things you can learn from that whole concept of minimalism. Like I don't need that much stuff. And if I could just get rid of half of it, my house will be cleaner. Things will be more organized like that. That's fascinating to me. So all of that's really been exciting to see. Yeah. You had the woman on her, her name escapes me right now, but she mastered like the coupons and then she, she had the blog and then she, she posted some recipe on Pinterest and, and, and then like ground beef with like rent, Costco ran on ground beef or something like that because, because of her <laughs> blog post. That's Erin Chase of $5 Dinners. Her story is so amazing, right? She wasn't doing that trying to be some famous blogger. She was She was just saying, man, we got to make our money work. And look how many lives she's affected just by doing what's best for her family. There's so much we can learn from that. Very cool. And what's interesting is you, you also tackle the mindset that's necessary to make these sort of changes. You had a, a really good conversation with Kim, our, our friend Kim Trumbo. Shout, oh, shout out to Kim. <laughs> and she was talking about how, you know, she, how she had, they bought her, she bought a boat and they had to sell the boat and they had to really reassess what was important in their lives. And was it the short term gain or the fact that you have long term freedom financial freedom because you you make some tough decisions and you know she eventually had to sell the boat and so it's one of those things that it's these it's really awkward conversations especially with behind closed doors you know with your family and you're like what you know it's time to tighten the belt and where do we where are we hemorrhaging money and where can we cut back and nobody wants to cut back on on their you know uh, cappuccinos and <laughs> and <clears throat> And, you know, on, on, on both sides, there's there's got to be a give and take. And I think it just bears repeating because it feels like these shows have been around for years. Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman and like all our friends with uh, financial podcasts. And, and you would think by with all these episodes and all this knowledge out there that just like everybody in the world would get it and everyone would have their finances in order. And, you know, there were things that you were mentioning that were like resonating with me. I'm like, well, let's making me think about certain things that I do and certain expenses that I have. And I'm like, it was just a bit of a wake up call because I had to realize, you know, what are the priorities? And, you know, sometimes if, if you don't, everything happens electronically now. So it's not like we get physical paper in the mail. So just, we just gets lost and you just pay the bill and you don't realize what's on the bill and all these things. It's just so many things to, to think about. Um, and it bears repeating and it needs to be top of mind. I think that's the biggest challenge we all face is there's so many responsibilities, so many things we have to go through every single day that you have to create that time to actually look at what you're doing with your finances. But nobody ever does it unless you say, whoa, this is serious. We seriously need to do that. We need to figure this out. And so that's the biggest thing. And for me, the hardest part was 
okay, I see it. I see the budget. I see what we got to do. But then I go to Target and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Look at that cute little thing. It'd be so cute on our cupboard. And it's just junk. Who are we kidding? Right? So I had to learn that I had to text my husband and say three reasons why we need this object. And first, like three reasons, I start and it's cute. (laughs) Number two, that they get weaker and weaker, right? And so learning that whole process, that's been the biggest change for me, which has helped me realize like I can be physically fit. This is going to be a pain in the butt and I'm going to have to work very hard and be very smart about my choices. And I might have to break up my relationship with Dr. Pepper. (laughs) Please, Please do. Okay. Okay. I know. But see, you have coffee. That's your thing. You love the coffee. So here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, uh, this might be one of those agree to disagree things, but (laughs) there's too many chemicals in these sodas. I haven't had this soda in such a long time. And all you got to do is read that label and, and, and God forbid it has high fructose corn syrup. I just lose my shit with that. You know, (laughs) sorry, but I had a curse just to get my point across. That's toxic stuff, man. And you know, every time, you know, my wife wants to have a Diet Coke or something, I'm like, I cringe because, you know, even that, it's so, this is hilarious that they call uh, Coca-Cola that has sugar in it, they call it Mexican Coke now. It's so funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it just means it's like normal Coke without any like chemicals in it. And it's funny they call it Mexican Coke because in Mexico, they don't sell the one with the high fructose corn syrup in it. And so I, I always thought that's funny. But, you know, if you're going to, it's almost better to drink something with sugar in it than some of these foreign chemicals. And that's my soapbox rant. Right. And so it's learning all of that and everybody has their thing. And what you're saying to me is exactly what my husband has said to me. And I don't know what it is. I love about it so much. It's stupid and I need to fix it. Right. I love Dr. (laughs) Pepper. I used to love Dr. Pepper, but yeah, that's just, it's, but the thing is it's when you realize what they're doing is they've created these aren't natural flavors. These are concocted right. in a laboratory to elicit the most like chemical dependent response where you feel like you got to have it. And like, oh, this because it's that flavor chemical profile is hitting some sort of nerves in your, you know, inside your, and it's triggering memories of your childhood. And it's a lot of deep deep stuff going on here that they're masters at manipulating and you know that's it's you know because a lot of this is connected to our youth right our growing up and apple jack apple jacks lucky charms man was amazing (laughs) like i thought it was the most awesome thing in the world and then like like pixie sticks like the stupidest things like (laughs) fun dip come on fun dip is a solidified sugar stick dipped into a <laughs> pouch of colored sugar. Yeah. I mean, that's so crazy <laughs> to think about. Like, and we would just eat all this stuff up and, and, and now like we look upon it with fondness, but some of those things like we haven't let go and it's just really deep seated childhood that we're holding on to. So, so, so what you're saying right there, think of how that relates to money. Mm-hmm. How people are trying to buy those memories. People are trying to buy that moment, that feeling, whatever it is. There is that high. There is that rush getting going. And especially like with the holidays coming up. Oh, my gosh. You're going to just see people going nuts. And I I don't know. So breaking away from any sort of that has been amazing experience. But I got to tell you, the first year we lived here, we were a one car family. And we're like seven miles away from anything in the sticks. So I felt like I was on house arrest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honey, I guess I'll see you. And, you know, and there wasn't, a, there's no uh, Uber or Lyft. Uh, no, <laughs> that that's really amazing that you think that technology has reached us that far. Horse, <laughs> horse and buggy or something. Like right. That. that would be a little more common around this area. And so that was a big, big shock to me, but it was so good to put me through that sort of a detox and figure out and then start afresh. So I think that's just what I need to do. That's the next step. And what I think is I'm talking through all of this and going through and just saying, this is what I'm learning and this sucks and it's so hard. And there are days that I would just rather have a Dr. Pepper than be angry at my four-year-old daughter. Well, that's not fair to her. That's not her beef. That's me, right? So people can relate to that and people are like, ugh, 
she gets it. She's going through it. That sort of thing. I think that's what's been really successful. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, you, and you speak, you're able to speak uh, from a perspective of someone who's in the trenches. Yes. And so that resonates with people, right? Like we, we talk, the best stories that we tell are the ones that we've lived. And those are the ones that people say, that's authentic. That's, I can, I know that that person, he or she went through that and it's similar to what I'm going through. And I see that they've, uh, they're working through it or, or they've come out great on the other side. So that shows me that there's hope and it can be applied to you know, from the smallest things to, I, I never knew about podcasting and now I have a podcast or I was 60K in debt and now I'm like almost home free. Like just the, you can apply it to so many things and it's one of the most rewarding aspects of, for me, for, for podcasting, for having this show and, and meeting people that are doing that in so many different ways that they're touched. Each podcaster that I talk to touches their audience and has their own <laughs> fanatic group of listeners because they're each hitting those points with their audience they're resonating they're making a difference and and people are, are noticing that wow and the, it all comes back to what we were talking about very very in the beginning is that human connection that i'm struggling and this is hard and you hear somebody else that's struggling and then all of a sudden you realize it's not as hard as I thought. I can really do this. There's something really empowering. And because we're just glued to our cell phones and because we've got the headphones going on like crazy, we're missing that. Yeah. And I think podcasting really has some magic to pull that in and make people realize that they're more connected than they. Well, if they're going to have the headphones on, at least be listening to one of our podcasts. Check. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Beautiful. So when you're not podcasting and you're not chopping down trees or whatever it is you guys do in the North. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend is Paul Bunyan. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right on. <laughs> Eat flapjacks in the morning. and <laughs> There's nothing but flannel. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of beautiful flannel up here. There is a lot of flannel up there. <laughs> Admit it, right? Yeah. I don't have any flannel. No? Write that down. My Christmas wish. <laughs> and lumberjack boots. Yes, there are those. Anyway. And so how close are you to Portland? Uh, it's only like two and a half hours, three hours from here. So not bad at all. Yeah. My first guest is uh, Chase Reeves. He's, he, lives, he lives in Portland. And I have not heard him. I listened to that interview. I liked it. The Fizzle, was, the fizzle Show. Yeah. He's yeah. hilarious. So if you guys get a Northwest thing, I'll, uh, I'll try to rope him into what you guys are doing. I think that you should be a part of the Northwest thing. <laughs> so you have a, an amazing story to tell. You know what I'm noticing is your guests are either like super, super energized, incredible people, or they are a rip in the shorts. Funny, like <laughs> kill over funny. Yes. I love that. I don't know where I fit in in there. I think I'm just the shoe shine boy, just learning <laughs> all of this, but it's beautiful. Oh, come on. Don't tell no. yourself short. No, I, I mean, I'm honored is what I'm saying. I'm really honored to be well, on the show. Well, here's the thing, Amy. Like, I like having people on the show that I connect with on, like, a real level. Like a, per not, like, a personal level, but just there's a connection and there's a feeling of camaraderie and fun and spontaneity. And, you know, naturally not every single guest that is, like, you know, shooting the shit back and forth, like, with them. But I have more fun. You know, my guests have fun and the the audience hears it and they're like, oh, this is funny. And they end up, you know, spitting up their 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 water bottle at, at the gym when they're working out because they, they just heard something that was, you know, made them laugh so hard that they couldn't resist it. And I, I love those experiences when they happen to me when I'm listening to. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> Who would do that? Uh, I'm dare, you, dare you make me spit up my water. <laughs> so I. I I just love when that happens and I, and I, so I can, I can engineer that to some, um, degree by carefully selecting who I invite on the show so that the audience know, sees, wow, these, these guys are friends or if they're not friends or they've, they've got some chemistry going on that is making them like really have an awesome time on this podcast. 
And those are the kind of podcasts I want to listen to, right? Yeah. Because there's, there's so many that are just trying to spew information. It's not beautiful. It's just, you know, <laughs> re, I can check your blog out anytime, right? I want to hear this. I want to hear the personality. I want to hear, sell the sizzle and the steak. <laughs> Yeah, you want to hear we want to hear something that you don't get from like reading their bio or seeing their photo or even sometimes meeting them in person like let let the hair down and just hashtag real talk is what I'd like to call it. Ooh, beautiful. Yeah. Nice. That'd be a fun show. Hashtag real talk. That's what, the, that's what this is. It is, right. <laughs> but I don't know where the podcaster's voice, the tagline for the name came, but that is gold, baby. You like, you, like, you like that? I love it. I was going to say boom, but my husband said, honey, you dropped the mic a lot. He said that to me last night while I'm doing the dishes because my daughter said something. I was like, boom, nice. And he looked at me like, you dropped the mic a lot. You need to let it go. <laughs> do you get that from, do you watch comedy specials or? No, I think I get it from tweets uh. from, yeah, people use that a lot. So where's your sense of comedy or just this, this feeling like you always want to have a good time? Like, where's that come from? Is that in your family or? Oh yeah. My family's nuts. They're, they're <laughs> healthy. Yeah. Okay. We're among friends, right? Just, when I was, just yeah. You and I, and, just you and I. Here. Okay. That's good. When I was in high school, I hated doing the dishes. Mom would make dinner and then it'd be, Oh, I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> I, I knew that to get out of dishes, all I had to do was make my mom laugh because she'd be sitting on the couch. That would be the first time she sat down because she's been in the beauty shop all day, get a dog all day long. Right. And so <clears throat> my sister would be doing the dishes, working on the dishes left and right. And then I had to start. And I don't know. I just started belching ballet. It is amazing when you combine the two genres, how beautiful and artistic it can be. And it's just become a running family joke. I, I think I might need oh. a little bit of explanation as to what exactly that is. <laughs> when you simultaneously combine the plie and the expression, <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. The end. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Mic drop. Mic drop. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So I think uh, the audience now knows Amy Robles a bit more <laughs> than they did before, whether they wanted to or not. Right. <laughs> no. So we'll we'll wrap up in a bit here. Um, what's what's got you excited then? You know, we're, we're this is your first year podcasting and your first conference. A lot of firsts for you, mm. and your first lab uh on international podcast day and so it was cool that i'm, I'm sure people found out about you who didn't know about you mm. because just because they were watching so a lot of firsts and a, a lot of motivation i imagine for you heading into the new year so what what out of all the things that are, that are coming up what has got you most excited I definitely love the direction that the show is going and I love um, getting the people that are listening to the show and their stories, having them come on and share what they're learning. And, and that's almost like building more uh, community. It's just making it bigger and better because you hear more than just my personal perspective. That's what I'm most excited about. And you, I think uh, you have to, keep doing what you're doing because the formula is working. You had a conversation with Megan. Um, sorry, Megan, I'm going to butcher your last name. Pangan. Pangan. <laughs> She's awesome, by the way. Uh, yes. We've hung out a couple times in person as well. And, but she was really open on your show about a couple of topics. And I think you're, you're putting your guests at ease. And I think that's um, an important skill to have as a podcaster. And so just, I think you should keep doing that and, keep the format that you have and keep making your guests feel like they're in a safe um, environment. And I think the, the show is really going to just take off because if you keep having conversations like that, I'd see nothing but great things ahead. 
Wow. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, one of the guests actually said to me afterwards, um, I don't know how to say this, Amy, but you're like really maternal. I told you way more than I needed to tell you, <laughs> which I think was a compliment, right? But yes. It, yes, it is. So I don't know. It was very cool. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. So super excited for you. And if uh, folks are looking to track you down, what's the best way to do that? You can find everything at thinkenriched.com. So it's always nice when you have a conversation that feels like it could go on forever. And I've mentioned it before. It speaks to me going out of my way to make sure I invite people on that I feel like I'm going to have fun with. I feel like I'm going to be relaxed with. And I feel that that energy comes across to you listening right now as I speak directly into your earbuds. And I I like having those types of conversations. And I'll keep having those because those are the best kind. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I just think it bears repeating. I think Amy is really, really sincere in in caring about the topic of her show because it resonates really deeply with her as she's lived through this. She talks about the huge, huge mountain of debt that uh, she was climbing out from under, and she can really see the light at the end of the tunnel now. And now she she brings that enthusiasm and that passion for showing others how it can be done onto her show, and then it's her human nature to connect with people that allows them to feel like they can open up to her. And that's really important. And it's something we should do on a regular basis, whether we have a podcast show or not. If if a friend comes to you and they come to you because they need your help or because they trust you, you know, why not like shut up basically and listen to what they have to say? Too many people feel like they have to insert their own opinions. And although that sounds a bit harsh, sometimes all they need is people to listen to. And Amy's a really good listener. So Um, I'm wishing her the best of success with the show. And so if you want to support this show, I think you know how to do that. Podcastjunkies.com. Episode uh, 59 will be at uh, slash 59 on the website. And you can always rate and review. Two people have recently. It's Mama Robles. You can guess who that is. Says Harry makes you feel like you're sitting at the table joining in the convo between him and his guest. You are part of it. His gentle nature and curiosity to dig deeper finds the stories you've never heard before. It's a smart, long firm conversation to learn as much as you can. Excellent show. Why, oh, thank you. Now we have an international one from Ronsley, which I imagine is R. Onsley. I'm just guessing. These are insightful and cover a wide range of business issues, all of which I find interesting. I definitely enjoy this podcast for its interesting insights into various areas of business, fun and entertaining from Ronsley at We Are Podcast. Thank you so much. I really, 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 really appreciate and honor these reviews when they come in. And if I think about it, they don't come in as often as I would like, but when they do, I, I treasure them because I realize people take the time. It's not easy to go to iTunes and the subscribe and and rate and review. And and it takes probably a good 10 to 15 minutes to get it all done. And then think about what you're going to write. So you're not just writing five stars. Awesome show. Thanks. Exclamation point, which I've seen in the past. And that's really not sincere. So the fact that uh, these folks have done it is really um, awesome. So if you would like your review read out loud, the easiest way to do that is actually write one podcastjunkies.com slash iTunes. If you've made it this far, then you're listening for the listener retention hashtag. Before that, before I get to that, uh, shout out again to Cedar and Soil who provide the music that is the opening soundtrack for this show. Thanks again, cedarsoil.com. And if you've made it this far, let's go with... um, Awesome Amy, since I've said the word awesome about a thousand times, both in the interview and here in my outro, and Amy's awesome. So 
Awesome Amy, one word, hashtag Awesome Amy, if you've made it this far, and you get the secret handshake, the high five, and my eternal thanks and gratitude. Have fun, guys. Talk to you next week.